because we have God in this place. On Tuesday nights, we broke forth. We were prepared for God to do something. And then we walk in and it's all started again. Maybe, maybe Wednesday and Thursday, nobody prayed. I want you to ask yourself, what role did you play in this service in not allowing it to be what it should have been? Because you didn't pray. Because you did your, now I lay me down to sleep. And you threw that in the pot. And I'm thinking, great. <laughs> it's like the guy that walks up and puts a penny in the office. Right? Cool. That will help us a lot. Thank you very much. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that were believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily. They continued daily. They continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, eating their meat with gladness and singing a uh, singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Because they continued daily. Something was happening that God was so well pleased. And in the midst of all of that, there was this single word called prayer. They were breaking bread and praying. Breaking bread and praying. Breaking bread and praying. Fellowship breaking bread and praying. Every day. Every day. Every, somebody said every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. That's how it has to work, church. Or if there's ever been an hour that the church must learn her role and fulfill the role she was designed for, now is that time. Anybody? Anybody tired of living the same life? If you're tired of sitting, living the same life, just put your hand up. That's sad. That is sad. You know that? I'm going to tell you how sad that is. Because if we were living the life that God has designed for us, God, a hand surely went up. If you were walking where God has you to walk, a hand would have never gone up. That only allows me to know one thing. That you and I, we might not even know what God's will is for our life. Because if you did, your hand would have never gone up. Have you ever thought that where you are today is the perfect will of God? Never thought about that. Huh? Have you ever thought the anguish that you've been going through of year of late is the perfect will of God for you? It's your lion's den. Your hand went up, so you don't know that. You ever thought that the grades and the troubles that you're having in school are part of God's perfect will, and your endeavors to get a better job or a good job? Are God's perfect will? You ever thought about that? And that the, the trouble and the trial that I'm in is God's perfect will for me right now. And in God's perfect will, I know one thing. The answer to my situation is coming very soon. Because God told me that I am going to the lion's den, but that He'll meet me there and He'll shut the mouth of the lion and He'll let all the people 
people to know that I was in God's perfect will as I was locked up with that line. And so, yes, I am happy for where I am. And no, I don't think that I don't know where I'm at. And see, all that means, church, is that we don't know God in the realm of prayer like we should know God. Because if we knew God in the realm of prayer like God wants us to know Him, then it doesn't matter what condition I'm in, I'm in God's will. It doesn't matter, as Paul said, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. I know what it's like to be light, and I know what it's like to be disliked. But I really don't care what condition I'm in, because therewith I have learned to be content, because I know that I'm in the will of God, because I talk with Him daily. How do we know? He said, I die daily. I put my flesh under subjection in the chamber of prayer, and I crucify the flesh, and I let it know subject to the Spirit so that God can have His way and that I might know that I'm living in God's perfect will. Isn't that incredible? All of this because I can command God. I have authority over God. He's given me authority over Him. That's powerful. I mean, that's enlightening tonight. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. As we stand tonight, church, you have power. And you must learn that that power is nurtured through prayer. Prayer is the one thing that separates the men from the boys from the women from the girls. And if you're ever going to mature in the Lord, it's only going to happen because you pray. And if we want to see God's will for this place it will only happen because of prayer. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how articulate you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It, friend, God has a will. And if you want to cry, Oh God, I need it now. Oh God, please send it. I can't go on. He says, All right. Stop the whining.